So as promised, here is a quick um, a quick uh, demo of uh, the vocal uh, distortion routine I was talking about. Now you do this if you feel your vocals need uh, thickening up in the mix, if you want them to feel more substantive, if they're too sort of wispy and they just feel like thin to you. This is a trick uh, that you can use. Uh, I actually recommend doing it manually if you can. Uh, I'll try to find an example of this. Um, I'm a big fan of um, doing this. So on one track, so this is me shouting in the background. And now you, I'll let it go to the chorus and you'll hear me shouting on the first chorus uh, underneath the vocal and then on the second chorus we actually detimed it the second time through because uh, we like the effect and so you the, the shouting which is normally under the vocals then gets moved. <laughs> Now I'll let it play through verse 2 to chorus 2, and in chorus 2 it repeats, and the first time you hear lights out, lights out, passed out in the garage, um, the vocals are under it, and you get the distortion under it, and then the second time you'll hear we, we um, move the shouted vocals, the distortion vocals, um, over uh, to sort of become like a, a bit of a counterpoint for the lead vocal. Uh, and this is when it's done manually. If I mean, I like shouted vocals uh, under under a track. I like this. It's a kind of a grungy effect. I came of age listening wise as a young kid listening to grunge, so I like this. But then we're going to go back to um, the workstation, and I'm going to show you how to kind of simulate this effect using distortion. Just like your smoke, slacking off, and now I go. Here they're together. And then you'll hear them separate now. <laughs> That's your dear old professor shouting. Anyways, uh, to create a similar effect, uh, and you don't want to um, sound like me right now, first thing every morning for the rest of your life, let's say you have this thing going on. All right, so the output initially begins with stereo out, and so it sounds like this. I, I wasn't right. And by the way, did you hear in the break there, there's a lot of compression on the vocal. When he stops singing, you can hear the um, the backing tracks come through, and that's that's likely bleed from headphones. Um, I, I wasn't right. Anyways, uh, I think somebody asked me about that last time. But anyways, so let's say we want to thicken that up, and and so first thing we're gonna do, uh, if you're in Logic 10, you can do this. You can simply create the send. Um, and so here's the send. No sound. Why do I have no sound? Because I haven't sent anything yet. I've just established the route. Now I have to add gain to it. I recommend just option clicking it so it goes to 0.0, .0 or full scale. And then I control click it and create track. And now they're both going. And you'll notice that we're much louder now because we have we basically uh, created two versions of this track. If you click them both together, control click them, you can create a summing track stack, which is what you want to do, um, and that effectively routes both to bus two. Okay, now some people are working on Logic Nine, and so I'm going to go through this routine for Logic Nine. What you would have to do, um, I've undone everything now. No send. 
So what we would do if we're in Logic 9 and we don't have this nifty Logic 10 track stack stuff is we would do something similar. We'd send to bus 1. Tracks here. Right? Um, the input is bus 1. We haven't sent anything there. Go to bus one, bus one stereo output. I put it so clear. Right. So because the output is bus one, that's not what we want. Dang it. It just did it automatically. So annoying. Um, we want it to be going so that we have the the main vocal track is going to well let's say it's mixed. So we'll say it goes to the vocal bus, and this will be bus two will be the vocal bus. So the main track's going to the vocal bus. If we follow it, that's all we get, right? If we don't send it, it's routing bus two into the vocal track. We also have it routing to bus one, and bus one is going to stereo out. That's the one we're going to call distro. And we're going, and we have volume being sent there. So if I solo this, uh, if I turn down the volume, nothing goes through because we haven't sent anything to the, aux to the auxiliary send. So um, now I need to route the, the auxiliary send to the vocal bus, so I send that through to, if you look on the input on the vocal bus, it's bus 2. So I set the output of the, the send to bus 2. So now everything is going to bus 2, right? So when I mute the bus to check it, this is my vocal bus. It's there. Then I can come on to uh, this. This Myself. I can bring up any and type of distortion so I want. Here. Let's say overdrive. And again, this is going to be something to thicken the vocals, so we don't want it too bright. All of my life, I wasn't right, but I don't care. I'll just admit that. And so, how do we? Decide this well. The first thing we do is, like I said, you're gonna put it down to like minus twenty three to begin with. All of my life. M mute it. All of my life. Bring it in. All of my life. I wasn't right, but I don't care. Just thickens up the vocals a tiny bit. It is by no means always appropriate, but it is a when we're talking about distribution as EQ and what this can do, uh, sorry, distortion as EQ, this is one of the things it can do. Anyways, uh, don't forget to hit subscribe.